that would bring water to the parched soil. American helicopters often pass over the areas where we are working. They employ oppressive machines, while we have the dusty shirts on our backs. We know the feelings of those who exult when the parched land obtains water. Sixteen years later, the parched barren plains have been transformed into a green fertile land. This is the story of the physician Tetsu Nakamura, who continued to battle drought as the flames of war came. He saw that the damage caused by the drought had grown more severe. <laughs> The farmland of Nangahar province, which had once been a fertile breadbasket, was now void of any crops. Throughout the country, some four million people stood on the brink of starvation. Food and water were essential to Afghanistan's recovery. Nakamura now made a firm decision to shed his doctor's coat and to start building an irrigation canal. Nakamura identified the Kunar River, one of Afghanistan's few large rivers, as the water source for his irrigation canal. With its headwaters among glaciers and 7,000 meter high mountains, the river flows year round, even in times of drought. Actually, this is a wrong map. Yeah. And uh, say the, we can get the water rather this side. If water could be drawn from the Kunar River to the parched fields, Perhaps agriculture could be revived. One and a half dollars. For these men who are unable to farm because of the drought, this is the sole source of support for their families. Nakamura began work on construction of the intake at the mouth of the canal. The intake is where water is drawn from the river into the irrigation canal. If it is not built properly, water will not flow into the system. To draw water into a canal, it is necessary to build a structure in the river. This changes the flow of the water, making it enter the canal. This structure is called a weir. Nakamura first undertook the construction of a levee upriver from the canal intake. When the levee is built, the river will flow on the far side of the island, keeping water out of the sight for the weir.
This will make it easier to construct the weir. Truckloads of soil and rock are dumped into the river. 20 meters to reach the island. Then, unexpectedly, the levee could be extended no further. No matter how much soil is dumped, the current carries it away. As the gap between the levee and the island narrowed, the flow of the river increased beyond expectations. If the weir is built perpendicular to the flow, it receives the full force of the river and is in danger of breaking apart. But if the weir is built diagonally, it diverts the water resistance, which makes it possible to complete the structure. Nakamura resumed construction of the weir. Following the design of the Yamato Weir, these boulders were placed at a diagonal angle to the flow of the river. Even in the rapid current, the weir grows in size. One month after construction began, the project faces a major hurdle. The weir must be extended into the deepest part of the river. A specially selected huge boulder is put in place. The boulder disappears under the surface of the water. The river is easily over five meters deep at this spot. too big to be lifted by the bulldozer, was pushed from the hills 16 kilometers away and finally rolled into place. It weighs about five tons. Finally, the boulders break the surface of the water. The deepest part of the river has been filled, and the weir has reached its projected size. <laughs> Many of the villagers in this region appreciated how the irrigation canal had improved security and brought peace to the area.
16 years have passed. Having shed the white coat of a doctor, Nakamura assessed the vision he had pursued. これは平和運動ではない。医療の延長なんです。で、医療の延長ということは。どれだけの人間が助かるかということなんです。で、その中で結果としてですよ。結果として、え、確かに我々の作業地域。60万人前後の地域では。この争いごとが少ない。治安が